What is what is happening in Ukraine and what on the border between Ukraine and Russia and what are you going to do about it? I have been in constant contact with our allies in Europe, <laughs> with the Ukrainians. My Secretary of State and National Security Advisor have been engaged extensively. And uh, um, what I am doing is putting together what I believe to be, will be the most comprehensive and uh, meaningful set of initiatives to make it very, very difficult for Mr. Putin to, uh, to go ahead and do what people are worried he may do. But that's in play right now. Our vaccine mandates, our vaccine mandates holding people back from jobs. Are you going to talk to Putin soon, Mr. President? Did you talk to Putin this morning, Mr. President? Did you talk to Putin this morning? No. В ответ мы вынуждены были, хочу это подчеркнуть, вынуждены были начать разработки гиперзвукового оружия. Это наш ответ. Не мы же это сделали сначала. Сначала наши партнеры вышли из договора по ПРО, потом из договора по ракетам средней дальности. Теперь вы спросили про Украину. Где эти красные линии? Если на территории Украины возникнут комплексы какие-то ударные, подлетное время до Москвы будет значит там 7-10, а в случае размещения гиперзвукового оружия сейчас испытали и успешно, и с начала года у нас будет на вооружении уже новая ракета морского базирования гиперзвуковая 9 махов. Подлетное время будет для тех, кто отдает приказы, тоже 5 минут. И создание таких угроз для нас и есть красные линии. Но я надеюсь, что до этого не дойдет. Надеюсь, что чувство здравого смысла, так и ответственности и за свои страны, и за мировое сообщество все-таки будет приятно. The situation in and around Ukraine remains fluid and unpredictable. There is no certainty about Russia's intentions. Uh, we uh, see a significant and unusual concentration of forces, which is uh, unjustified and unexplained, and accompanied uh, by heightened rhetoric and disinformation. And we know that Russia has used force before against Ukraine and other neighbors. Today, ministers discussed the situation. We stand united uh, in our aim to deter Russia from any further aggressive actions. We call on Russia to be transparent, de-escalate and reduce tensions. Any future Russian aggression against Ukraine would come at a high uh, price. Remain vigilant and avoid escalation. Ministers made clear any future Russian aggression would come at a high price and have serious political and economic consequences for Russia. Ministers made clear that we stand by our decisions. Our support for their sovereignty and territorial integrity remains unwavering. And the message is that it's only Ukraine and 30 NATO allies that decides when Ukraine is ready to join NATO. Russia has no veto, Russia has no say, and Russia has no right to establish a severe influence trying to control their neighbors. We don't know whether President Putin has made the decision to invade. We do know that he is putting in place the capacity to do so on short order, should he so decide. So despite uncertainty about intentions and timing, we must prepare for all contingencies while working to see to it that Russia reverses course. We've made it clear to the Kremlin that we will respond resolutely, including with a range of high-impact economic measures that we've refrained from using in the past. We call on all sides to restore the ceasefire to July 2020 levels. And we urge Russia to de-escalate, to reverse the recent troop buildup, to return forces to normal peacetime positions, to pull back heavy weapons and forces from the line of contact in eastern Ukraine, to refrain from further intimidation and attempts to destabilize Ukraine internally, 
and to leave plans for further military action behind. And quite frankly, it's, um, it's perplexing because the idea that Ukraine represents a threat to Russia is, uh, would be a bad joke if things weren't so serious. In light of the destabilizing actions taken by the Lukashenko regime, the North Atlantic Council has suspended cooperation with Belarus. The United States is preparing additional sanctions in close coordination with the European Union and other partners and allies. We call on the regime to immediately stop using migrants as political weapons. We will hold the regime accountable for its ongoing disregard for democracy, for human rights, for the rule of law. Taking into account the gravity of the threat that a potential new Russian invasion in Ukraine poses, the European continent may be at a very critical juncture right now. We believe it is necessary to show strength in order to avoid the need to be proving it later. The open question is uh, uh, the extent and the volume of these sanctions. Uh, this is the most uh, tricky issue. And then uh, there will be the moment of truth. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, we will avoid the need to actually impose them. And the very fact that these sanctions are prepared will be sufficient uh, deterrence measure for Russia to think twice and put the military option aside. But of course, if Russia decides to uh, conduct another big military operation in Ukraine, and EU is to make a decision, and that decision has to be made by consensus, uh, I think that uh, there will be no country that will be able to oppose this decision uh, having a big war in its background. Yesterday I was with the Prime Minister of Ukraine in Brussels. Today we'll meet the Foreign Affairs Minister. And in both cases, I want to stress that for the European Union, the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine is above anything. And we will be standing firmly and decisively with Ukraine in front of any attempt to undermine its territorial integrity and sovereignty. Everything has to be done in order to make clear that any aggression against Ukraine will have a, a strong response.